Thunderpole T3000 setting a benchmark by Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446. Right, so the subject of today's video is I'm setting a little bit of a benchmark because I want to pit all my other radios against one particular radio. That particular radio is the Thunderpole T3000 that's in my car. So I want to pit that against every other CB radio I own and, the, and that will be the one set in the baseline. The receiver will be this. My Nuelec NESDR Smart. So I've got a list of set places I'm going to drive to I'm not going to reveal at the start of the video what those places are, but at none of those points will I be leaving the car because I will be using the antenna that's already on the car. That's the um, uh, part that's important here. That the setup on the antenna setup on the car will be the same antenna at all times, and the antenna at this end will also be the same. Which in this case today it is the boomerang antenna. So. The, it's not mounted that high, but I am on, on the top floor of a block of flats and, uh, it, well, it's a, well, you've got your ground floor, you've got the middle floor and the top floor, I'm on the top. So, that might give you an idea of what we're looking at here. And I've already had a look at the, the um, uh, terrain and everything that's in between me and all of the other little test points. So, I've made it, tried to make it as difficult for radio as I possibly can get away with. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up on the SDR. I'm not going to turn on any gain controls apart from the, the standard automatic gain control of the RTL SDR or the SDR Sharp. I'm not sure what that checkbox actually does. So that's the only thing that's going to be turned on and the SDR is connected to the boomerang and it'll be recording into the tablet. So that's what I shall do. So I'll set that all up and then I will join you in the car very shortly. Okay, you join me at the, the, the Richmond Race Course in Huggle Road where I took the PNI Escort HP7120. Now that radio is still in the car. I called at Tesco first to put some fuel in because I needed to. So I'm going to be using the call sign Papa Mike 27 as I did in the handheld CB's Revisited video. So I'm going to just check there's no one on there. Doesn't appear to be. So I'll give it a go. This is a test transmission, this is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27, this is a test transmission. Location, Hergill Road, end of Old Racecourse, Richmond, North Yorkshire, 1234554321. Right, so that's done. The next check in point is uh, the, Victor the Victoria Road petrol station. So that's where we'll be going next. So I've done what I needed to do up here. Now I've just got to hope the camera doesn't fall off because the camera did fall off on my way to Tesco. I was from Tesco, I was actually doing some filming. I'm just going to watch out for dogs and everything up here as well. So dog walkers come up here. And uh, I don't like it when dogs aren't on their leads near cars. Now, this is the fun part because there's a massive hole in this entrance. It's not a properly paved road, it's basically just. <laughs> they've just used whatever they could bloody find, I suppose. If it was still being used as a race course, it would probably be a properly paved road, but it isn't. There's the big hole. Let's put the indicator on, just check there's nothing coming over the brow of that hill. Because that is a pretty blind one, and uh, Freelander came around that corner yesterday and I didn't see it till last minute. So the next check-in point is down here. This is Hergill Road in Richmond. It's actually warm because and I've got the air conditioning on. So I'll just put it into fourth gear and just let the car go down. <laughs> Yeah, so what I'll be doing is I'll be checking the um, uh, SDR when I get back, and if it's all come out, I'll put out all of 
I'll put help score it and I'll let you know what the score was. And if I need to rerun the test at a later date, I'll rerun the test at a later date. So, shouldn't be too bad. This road's not so bumpy, but it does feel bumpy. So I've just got to keep an eye on the phone, make sure it doesn't, the Samsung Galaxy S4, this phone, make sure it doesn't fall out of the um, uh, holder again, or the holder fall off the windscreen, which is what actually happened. And there's parked cars down here as well, which makes it a bit of a nightmare. So, because it's, uh, it's mostly residential down here, just so happens to go up to to that nice bit of spot spot across the, the top there. It's a lovely place to go with port, a portable radio, but it's not really ideal right now. So I've got APRS running in the background as well. So that's a good thing. So we're almost to the bottom of the hill and I'm almost at the next check-in. So about to enter a 20 zone and some speed bumps here so it's always fun yeah so you can probably just say see some of the lovely buildings of of richmond some of these lovely old buildings that are down here just passing the cricket club uh, cricket is not a sport that really interests me that much there we go so got my next check-in Test transmission, Papa Mike 27, Victoria Road Petrol Station. 12345-54321. Right, that's done. Next, te next check in's at the uh, set of traffic lights just up here. So each one that rece is received by the RTL SDR gets a point. So that's how it works. So we're just passing the Friary Gardens in Richmond now. There's a little bit of QRM going on there, that's okay, I can live with that. There might be a lift on, but that's okay. I'm only at four watts anyway, so it might be okay. Next check-in point. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27, Gallowgate Junction traffic lights, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Test transmission. check-in is outside what is known locally as Richmond Middle School. Obviously closed right now due to COVID-19, but I'm not sure whether that one's included in the reopening of schools uh, on the 1st of June. Not that it's important because I um, uh, don't have children at the moment, which I'm not sure where that's a blessing or a curse, to be honest. Where you were going. Still got the APRS going. Yep, so everyone that hits the SDR scores a point. So we're just coming up on that. Here we go. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27. Test transmission location, Richmond Middle School, Darlington Road, Richmond. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27. Test 
Yep, so that should now be into the SDR. Depending on how well the SDR is actually receiving. Because the antenna is not that high in the grand scheme of things. So the next stop, if, as long as I've not missed any out, should be the Traveller's Rest, or what was the Traveller's Rest in the village of Skeeby. Now Skeeby is a favourite of my spouse because uh, there's a little river that runs down the down the side of the road, well it's a little stream, it's not actually a river. <laughs> it's probably not got much water in it today because it's not really been that rainy lately. I haven't been on this road in, in quite a while. So, just got to watch it past here because sometimes the police like to hide with a speed gun. So, don't want to upset them. No, they're, they're not in there, but you know, they might have been. So, next stop's the village of Skibi. And Skibi. Quite picturesque, it's nice. It doesn't have a pub, that's what the traveller's rest was, obviously. But that closed and it's been well, it's been empty ever since. You get a nice view across to the moors from here, and if it's really clear, it's not that clear, it's a bit hazy. Sometimes you can see the Billsdale television transmitter and you can see over to, to Teesside as well. Although to be honest, why would anyone want to see over to the heavy industry of Teesside? But to be honest, you just never know, some people might like that kind of thing. So, it's probably one of the first videos I've actually done in the car, to be honest. Well, in this car anyway. I think I did one in my 106 at one point, I'm not sure if that ever made it to YouTube. I need to slow down because I'm coming up to Skeeby now and the Traveller's Rest is imminent. I refer to it by that name because the local bus stop is also called that. The local bus company that serves, serves there. Refer, uh, well, it's uh, Arriva North East, um, uh, what came after the United Bus Company, for those that are interested in such matters. Right, let's see. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27, test transmission location, Travellers Rest, Skeeby. So that's been done. Check the SDR and get home. There's motorcyclists coming the other way, and with some horse manure in the road. I feel bad for him. I'm right through that. Lovely little church there. Not sure if you can see it there. You might be able to see it now. This village is full of speed bumps, which I think is in part down to speeders and boy racers, but there's nothing we can do. Next check in is the bridge. bridge here. I'm just going to go steady away so I don't lose my camera. Okay, so there's the bridge. I'm not trying to get through. Test transmission, Papa Mike 27, test transmission, Skeeby Bridge. Right, so that's now been sent. Ten minutes in according to this camera. Well, ten minutes into this section anyway. So this is the furthest point of the A6108. Or, basically, this is the road, this road runs from Ripon all the way up here passing through the towns of Leyburn, uh, Richmond obviously, and other towns of that, in that general direction. But, main, but the ones I can remember off the top of my head for the, for, for the 6108 is Ripon, Massam, Leyburn, Richmond. Those are the major towns I know of for that road. And for those of you who are interested in roads, not all of you are. I'm starting to go uphill a bit now, so. That might help with the signal. 
but I chose this route specifically to make it hard. I might actually do um, uh, a front-facing view of the of the route um, uh, another day, just to show you where I'm going. Roundabout up here, which will be my next um, uh, my next uh, transmission. This is a brand new roundabout. Um, well, I say brand new; it's a couple of years old now. Uh, it was uh, built around about the time the A1 was upgraded to motorway. I will be returning via the via the motorway. I won't be going back the way I've just come. So we're at that roundabout now, and there's a new um, uh, factory outlet being built across here. Test transmission, Papa Mike 27, test transmission, A6055 roundabouts, Dodge Corner. Let's let this car go past me first. Now move into the correct lane. I haven't been up here since, since before the lockdown, actually. It's nice that the restrictions are a little bit le less what they were. Left would take me onto the 66. I don't really want to go down there because, you know, it's um, heads towards Cumbria and uh, they don't want people going there right now. Which, personally, I don't blame them. Looks like they've redone these lights. So I want to be in the left lane here. And the next one is uh, middle tyres lane end. Which is the other side of the other side of um, uh, a bridge just coming up here. So I'll stop at the roundabout if there's anything coming. There isn't there isn't usually anything that would be coming be coming out of the and there's a DBSA way station up here. So that's where it will most likely be coming from. So we're now running more or less parallel to the A1M. A1M being the major trunk road between London and Edinburgh, although it's not seen that much traffic lately. It was bicycle. Must be enjoying the sun. See if we can get past him on this bridge, I might not be able to. Uh, can we bumpy because I'm having to go over the cat size. And um, we come up to the next uh, test point. Just coming up to it now. So I'll scrap my microphone and we shall begin the transmissions. This is a test transmission. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27. Test transmission, Middleton Tyres Lane End. now done. This road's on a no stopping restriction. Never used to be, but that's because it never used to be a major road. There's people walking in the road there. Let's go past them quickly. The next stop is uh, Silver Street in the village of Barton. That's where we're going next. day for it. That's all I can say on that. It's an absolute beautiful day. So, we're going to be turning right at this junction. I did some of my driving lessons along here, in case you're wondering how I know these roads quite well, apart from the fact that I've lived around here near most of my life. minutes to get from where I was to where I am now. That's actually not bad going.
about the test now where it's at its worst. This is a test transmission. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27. Test transmission, Silver Street, Barton. And the next one's at the Church Lane end, which is just around this, like literally around this corner. So they're actually quite close together, these two. That's the Church Lane end. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27, test transmission, Church Lane end. Just a really, all it is really, just a row of houses. We're just entering it now. It's just a row of houses and a, and a couple of farms. This is a test transmission. This is a test transmission. Papa Mike 27. This is a test transmission. Testing location: Newton Morell near Barton, North Yorkshire. I didn't do the one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one on the last couple. Ones. Next one, Jolby Lane End, which is actually quite low down. It's just past this um, uh, petrol station. It's just coming up. At, well, I don't think it's open anymore. And they only and last minute it was open. It was they were just selling diesel. It's just here. So it's a slight drop, but it's not too much of a drop, but on, when I looked at the, the map, there was a bit of a drop. Let's go. This is a test transmission. This is a test transmission. Papa Mike 27, test transmission, Jolby Lane End, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. If anyone's listening to this, they must think I'm nuts, but to be honest, it needs to be done. It's all uphill now. And you know. We can pass this tractor. Yes, I can. So the good things about this road being much arrow straight it, and I believe it was the old A1. Because means if you get stuck behind a tractor on it you can just overtake them as it tends to be clear. There's a lot of tractors on this road. Um, because there's farms up here. Just about to approach the next check-in point which is at the top of the hill here. top of the hill where I want to check in from and then I check in uh, the bridge in and then uh, the, the roundabout so this is the top of the hill now this is a test transmission Papa Mike 27 top of Stapleton Bank 1 2 3 4 5 5 4 3 2 1 okay so that's done that's transmitted so now I'm dropping down into Stapleton which is which is very low. Bit of a sun on the camera there. Uh, next check in, which is quite close, is the bridge in down here. Which is, yeah. This is a test transmission, Papa Mike 27. Test transmission, 1234554321, bridge in Stapleton. Final test. One final test transmission, and then that concludes the test. And I'll be heading back down the motorway because I'm not going into Darlington, which is over there, because I think there may be a high incidence of coronavirus in there, and I don't fancy my chances. So we're on to the final.
final test. Now I'm going down the motorway. Final test transmission, Papa Mike 27, A66 roundabout, uh, top of A66M. That's that's the test. That's that's the test route. So now it puts me back on the motorway to go back home. So it's been a lovely day. It's been perfect. I'm looking forward to seeing what the SDR has um, uh, revealed for me and how I can score it. Um, I'll let you know what the what the score is when when I get back to the home QTH. So, try there. Yeah, so once I get back to the home QTH, I'll let you know what the score is and we'll see how well the Thunderpole T3000 did in setting its benchmark. This is the benchmark radio. The next radio is subject to this test, weather perm permitting, because obviously the antenna of my home QTH needs to be up during, during decent weather like this. That'll be the PNI Escort HP7120, which is uh, out, which is out of the same factory, I believe, or a factory by the same company anyway, um, that made the Thunderbolt T3000. Yeah, as far as I can tell, they're all made by a company called. They're both made by a company called Namphone, and they um, uh, they they um, uh, basically are OEMs to all the brands. Uh, the brands just ask what they want and, uh, and uh, Nam Fun makes it for them. It's that kind of thing. So, should be home very soon. So, I'm still on channel 20 and I'm about to go on to the A A1M. So, now you know what the test route is and you also know my return route as well. Let's, let's go. So, a little bit of transmission there, but nothing to write home about. I think it's just uh, noise, background noise. So, it's all good, I suppose. Might be worth me getting one of those little clip-on mics, I think, as well, actually. Except um, my hours over the last month weren't brilliant, and I don't think my hours for this month are going to be any better, so investing in the channel for better audio and such like is probably just going to stay on hold for a while. But it's nice to sit in here and have a chat with you guys as well um, while I'm driving around in, in the car. Yeah, uh, I've still got my APRS beacon on it, it's not going to transmit anything right now. Um, should be good to go because it's going to overtake this, uh, this uh, wagon in front of me. Yeah, I do actually like driving. It's not something I get to do much of during a lockdown, apart from when I'm at work. Which is a bit of a shame, really. I've got a sticker in my windscreen that says I'm monitoring the 1.9, but I'm still on 20, so what I'll do is I'll go down to 1.9. There we go. I've gone down to the 1.9, and uh, there's it still on there. There we go. Yes, it's nice to have it. Yeah. And that's not practically no way, I'll have to turn that down now. Um, it's nice to have a drive and have a chat with you guys, because um, uh, obviously I don't, I don't really interrupt with you that much because I'm that busy. Uh, so I just hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe from the virus. And uh, you know, because obviously I could do this because I'm sat in my own car and no one can come anywhere near me. And if anyone so much as tried, all I have to do is lock the door. So. It's a beautiful day for a drive as well. I mean, if you've got a radio in your car, like a CB or, or a two meter rig, like what I've got, or, well, I've got both actually, so I've got the two meter radio and a uh, CB, just get on the air with it. Um, whilst you're driving along, you can just pick up that microphone and have a natter. That's, you, you never know who's out there. There's, uh, uh, lorry drivers use it. Um, so, if you are doing one of these long journeys, once we're allowed to do really long journeys again, for, for purposes of pleasure, right a bit, a bit there. Yeah. So, once you, once we're able to 
do really long journeys for the purpose of leisure. Can, there's a, just a wagon just gone the other way, had a CB antenna on the roof. You never know. The driver of that might have been listening, but he might have already been having a chat with his uh, with his mates, as they do. So, yeah, just put a CB in your car. So when you're driving along the motorway like this, you can you can have a have a little um, uh, chat with somebody out there. If you've got an amateur radio license and you've got a two meter rig, why not pop that in your car? And you can use repeaters all over the country. So, so yeah. Now that's a nice thing to see. Don't drive tired. Service is open. That's good to know in, the, in these times of a lockdown. Although, to be honest, this, I wouldn't want to go near the motorway services because I'd be too worried about picking the virus up. But, uh, so it's, it's just it's been a lovely day, I suppose. And you know, and I look and I look forward to um, uh, getting more radios tested like this. And, you know, uh, I look forward to being on the air a bit more. I mean, I joined our local club. Well, actually, I think I might have started our local club net on the local repeater last night because I put a call out around about half past seven last night on our local repeater, GB3IR. Uh, I'm, I'm often monitoring it. So, if you're not, and if you're not within range of it, it's connected to Echolink. So, you can connect via Echolink if you if you, you want to try and get hold of me, you know, my amateur radio call sign, so, <laughs> why not? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think I'll keep this a bit on the end of the video, so, now the main event is all over and done with, I, and yeah, a little bit of a chat, I don't usually do this, but hey, having a nice steady drive back home to the home QTH, so why not? It's not something, it's not, this is not something I do very often, so, And uh, in the times of lockdown, I've not been able to do it. And that's just, um, well, you know, not been ideal. But I'm sat in my car with the air conditioning on. Just... Yeah, I'm uh, sat in here with my air conditioning on, just uh, tootling along jet merrily away. Got my radios. Got you guys today. What more could I want? Let's try not to crash. <laughs> that would be a good idea. Yeah. So I've got you guys out there. I mean, it make, makes sense I can have a chat with you guys. Yeah, and uh, it won't be long before I'm even before I'm even back home. So. It is still warm in the car, even though I've got the air conditioning on. But the air conditioning is on, and that's one of the good things about the modern cars. You can just sit in here, air conditioned. You've got, and I've got my radios, and I've got you guys today. And yeah. I've also got the option of music, but obviously, because uh, you guys are on, are on the. Today instead, I can't put any music on, so I'd get a copyright strike, and that wouldn't be good. So it's just um, uh, one of those things, I suppose. YouTube, uh, if YouTube or music, and I decided YouTube today because you know. You guys are out there, you guys watch my videos, and I'm happy that you watch my videos. Even if you, whether you like or dislike them, doesn't doesn't matter to me. It means I know they're being watched, I know people are watching them. Um, and uh, and if when you subscribe to the video, as the, uh, the channel rather, I know you're all there as well. So why not? So, well, I'm not sure what forthcoming attractions I, I actually have at the moment for the channel. Um, Obviously, because obviously there's this one which I'm doing now today on this beautiful, gorgeous, sunny Thursday. It's the 28th of May 2020. We're still going through the COVID-19 thing. If you're watching this uh, after the event, and uh, 
it's uh, slightly less uh, strict rules on that now, so we're all good. And well, you know, I'm impressed that I've actually been able to get out, do something, and not be stuck stuck in a house a bit further away than just the bottom of my street or the town that I live in. So, I'm almost back. So I'll be leaving the motorway at this next exit. So, and... It's around about ahead of me and I'll be turning. That camera's just gone over the limit. <laughs> what happened while, while I was on the slip road, which is a good thing. So the camera's just gone over its limit to record, so I've started the recording again. So, yeah. You know. Yeah, there's a... So, you know. I think the S4 must have a limit in it on how long it can actually record for. But that's okay. That's okay. So I'm back on the road, back towards uh, the home QTH now. If you're going to use a Galaxy S4 for filming, uh, just bear in mind that there is a time limit on it and it will stop recording. So, it's a good thing I was on that slip road, wasn't it? So, yeah, I've still got the APRS going. I could, could stand to put the, the, the blower on a bit louder, but or higher rather. Well, it is louder and it's going faster, but it's actually all right what it is at the minute. Just be careful. suburb of Colburn now. Just have to get around that roundabout first. Um, I'm going past its uh, Walkerville Industrial Estate. Uh, now Colburn is kind of uh, attached to Catrick Garrison. So it's kind of expanded towards uh, Catrick Garrison. Because some of the addresses in Captured Garrison are classified as Colburn. Um, well, there's uh, three parts of Colburn. There's the original old village, which we're not going to be going to today. I'm going to get through these lights. Uh, lorry in front of me going a wee bit slow. There we go. Uh, so there's the old village, which is. Uh, the right at the bottom to the north. Then there is the Colburn Lane Estate, which is a Richmond Show District Council housing estate. And then there's uh, the new houses up here and uh, Colburn Business Park. And also a meat wholesalers, which. Uh, 
my spouse and I both like to go to, although obviously my spouse not being here at the moment, you know. So, some potholes in the road here. They haven't been fixed. I'm just about to go around the second of two inconveniently spaced mini roundabouts. This, before those houses were built, this road was just straight through, and then they put the mini roundabouts in for the for the housing estates, which is a wee bit of a pain because you've got to keep slowing down for them. Hey, yeah, if you're, if you're local to the area, you'll know what I mean. So. Usually quite quiet on the radio front. Normally this part of the road here, this is before from a place called Hilliard, Hilliard Row, I'd normally get some uh, QRM on GB3IR's frequency with a slight mains hum in it. Uh, I've not, I've not fully traced where that's coming from, but I suspect it might be a local taxi company. Uh, not the taxi company that has an office down here though. But I think that's what it might be. But I haven't ever got any conclusive proof on that just yet. So, so I do get QRM down there. That's something I'm going to investigate maybe on another video if the QRM does come back. So far it hasn't. There's lots of people out today, but at least they're maintaining social distancing, I suppose that's a good thing. I can because I'm sat in the car and you know it's where I like to be. In my car. That's why. I, well, that's one of the things I like about the job I do because it means I'm in my car all the time. Well, nearly all the time. If we've got hardly anything going out the door, then it could be at least it could be anything up to two hours before I'm in my car. That that has happened. And yeah, I'm trying to make up what I've lost in a uh, in a uh, salary back in my um, uh, fuel money, which is. Which I should be able to manage to pull off. So, I'm almost back. And as per usual, the traffic lights that I want to go through are red. Just happens, doesn't it? Well, give me a bit more time to spend with you guys. Ah, here we go. They're gone. They're gone. They're gone green now. Although nothing's moving. There we go. And uh, for anyone that's interested, my car has a manual gearbox. I know that might interest some of the Americans out there who drive automatics. I don't drive an automatic. It's, manuals are more common here in the, in the UK, and that's the way I like it. So I'm almost back at the home QTH. So I wonder what the cutoff for the video would be then. I don't think there's, I don't think you can change it on the S4. So, so if you're using an old S4 as a as a video camera, which is what I'm doing at the moment, because I don't really have a lot else. Someone had been out on their bicycle, but they're pushing it back out. I wonder if the chains come off or something. Eh, my bicycle's not really that that roadworthy at the minute. It's uh, a wee bit frazzled. The uh, bolt that holds the pedal on it's uh, come off, and it won't go back on, no matter how much I screw it up. Screw it up, and it just all falls off. All right, so I'm back at the home QTH. <laughs> Pull my car in the front here. Oh, it's a bit. I normally just put it up on the curb just to make sure it's nice and tight in. So, 
and I'm back and right so what I'll do now now I'm home is I will um, find out how the whole thing went and hopefully the computer hasn't done anything untoward while I've been away because that can happen unfortunately so I'm just going to turn the car off now because I'm done my poor little FTM 400. It's like, I can't breathe, I'm too hot. The fan's going like, no, tomorrow. Right. And now I've just been warned the battery's low. So, that's, that's a, that's means I've done well. So, let's try not to hit back by accident. There we go. So, I'll just go and, uh, I'll cover the camera that little, see me. Right, so I'll just go into the house. I will join you back up there once I've collated the results. Right guys, I'm back home. I've been back a while. Um, so it's taken me quite some time to go through the inter... Well, first of all, I had to convert it to MP4 so I could... so it would be compatible with my um, uh, video editing suite. And then I had to go through the entire thing to find out just how many points this little benchmark setting thing we, we managed to achieve with the Thunderpole T3000, my Sirio High Power 4000 antenna at the car end, and at this end, the Thunderpole Boomerang. But bear in mind though, that that antenna isn't that much above the roof line, it's not as high as I would like it. it and also, uh, there is quite a fair bit of hills in the way as well, which would obviously not, not help, and uh, I did turn the gain up on the RTL SDR because that not only would that have brought in the signals, it would also have brought in the noise. And also that would have uh, been a little bit unfair. So I kept the gain turned down as low as it needed to be. It's on all, and it was switched on to the automatic gain control. So the first transmission did sound like it was in the noise when I listened to it, but that's maybe got something to do with the fact that the the gain control was turned right down on the um, uh, on the RTL SDR, and uh, I don't think the auto gain had compensated for the signal. But uh, running that test into President Grant two um, uh, the other day, um, it was a better signal. But still, bear in mind there's a, the antenna's not as high as it ought to be. If it was any higher it might have, might help. So if I raise the antenna then that would make things much better, hopefully. Well, that's the theory. Whether that would work in practice is a different matter entirely, so I'll be raising the antenna at some point and, and rerunning the test. Um, so the benchmark is currently set at 4 for the rest of the radios. Um, anything above 4 is good, anything less than 4 is not so good. Um, so that's what I managed to set with it. So those clips will have already been inserted in, you'll have seen them. Um, so yeah, and uh, well, thanks for watching the video and uh, sticking, at, sticking it out uh, all the way to the end. Um, obviously because I was chatting to you guys in the car on my way back, so why not? And um, yeah, so interest, interesting results. So. Theory, the theory is that the antenna just should really be a bit higher because it's not that high up. It's like literally outside this window just behind me here and uh, the bot you could actually see the bottom section of the antenna sat from here so it would have to be higher in order for it to make any re real kind of difference. There's a little bit of slack in the cable to allow me to do that so be, that's worth an experiment but that's for another day, that's not for now. So the next benchmark setting I'm going to be doing with the antenna in that same position is for the handhelds and the benchmark I want to set for the handhelds because it make because it makes sense and just without my heat gun falling off is to use this Intec H520 plus because this can achieve four watts and it will be using the stock antenna, it will not be using the Albrecht because that would give it an unfair advantage. So that's the next um, uh, benchmark I want to set. Um, 
that's for a different video because that covers a different subject entirely, which is handhelds, um, which are a completely different beast altogether because they run off their own internal batteries and batteries do deplete quite quickly. Um, not all handhelds are capable of delivering 4 watts, but it, it wouldn't make much difference anyway because um, to get further um, uh, it's not as simple as just going from a watt to 4 watts it kind of needs to be a bit more proportionate and uh, to achieve further distance it's a bit difficult to do on the citizens band anyway due to the legal limits so that, that should cover everything this has probably been quite a long video in the grand scheme of things so this is Paul Mike Zero Whiskey November Uniform All 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446 the test call sign I use is Papa Mike 27 and I use that as a t just for test purposes I don't use that for communications purposes um, so if you want to go old school with handles on the CB you can call me the Red Squirrel as well so same please for now guys and I hope to work you on the air soon whether that be on the amateur bands or CB or PMR 446 and stay safe watch for the virus and Look after yourselves and while the weather's good try and get some fresh air because that will help, definitely. So that's freeze for now guys. Don't forget you can subscribe to this channel and ring the bell to be notified of new videos as I upload them. Send your freeze from Paul, Mike, Zero Whiskey November Uniform or 26 Charlie Tango 730 on 11 meters and PMR 446.